is super important when people go away. The Lord has done some things, and you can receive. It's not just a reporting, but you can receive in, in your heart. So we're going to start with Amy. Just in case they come. So this weekend, man, I wrote something on my way back on the airplane because a lot of the times I think about what was happening right right after. And so, yeah, I'm going to share that and then try to make it quick. So this weekend, the speakers were dousing us. I could say oozing because that was a better word. With God's love, I had become numb to how cold and dead I was becoming. I am learning that every moment I am not breathing in in God's presence, I am losing life. Distance and time from him is like cancer in our body. Only it is more ravishing in its destruction. I realize I've never stopped loving Jesus and desiring him, but, full, but longing for him is not the same as living in him. We all must examine ourselves and are, truly, and are we truly eating our daily bread? Are we clinging to life itself? I can't make that determination for any of you. Several times in my life, I have found myself in decline in my, in my life in Jesus. And the only times that I have come back from it were at these conferences, surprisingly. These extreme encounters with Jesus, I have discovered that I have a deadly allergy that is comparative to anaphylactic shop type allergies. I said this because I'm a nurse and I just had to include something. Almost a nurse. Thank you, thank you. So my allergy, if you want to know what it is, is the absence of his spirit, spirit his presence. So, so, so what I meant by that is when I'm not with him, when I'm not actively pursuing him or asking him to feel, feel me, it's like anaphylactic shock, and that's pretty deadly. One day away from him and the effects from it, uh, the effects from it are profound. You may not be like me. You may not have that great of a need for his presence. And so I'm not speaking to you. But if you are at all like me, I beg you, fall upon the rock and let him do whatever is needed to bring you back to life. And so just, just briefly, when I was at the conference, most of the time I was there, I was just, I was just being confronted with how dead and how cold and how lifeless I was feeling. And, and the Lord is so gracious that he'll... He'll allow you to be in his presence and around it, and you can make your life very comfortable. It is very easy with Jesus to not be in him and be comfortable. And I didn't realize I was deceived. I had a mask. That, that's exactly what I was doing, that I had your guys' love. I had, I had a career coming up. I had wonderful Jesus music. But then I was there, and people are talking about how just being in their pres his presence brings them into tears. And then just reading his word, they say, when was the last time that you cried? And, and they're talking about, like, the ground shifting beneath them and groaning in their spirits and that we're coming to a place where we're laboring in him. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, I don't cry in your spirit. I don't cry in your presence. And I kept thinking, I've been thinking, because you guys are, like, the most important people in my life. And some other others of you speak much more fluently about Jesus. And you may not be where I am, but this conference, and it might have been other conferences, too, that are just as powerful, but it made me realize that, you know, if you look around us, the world is not getting any better. And if you've read your Bible, you know how close it is to the end and how close it is for him coming. And every time people have encounters with Jesus, like if they go to heaven and they have these dreams and these visions, they keep saying, I'm coming. I'm coming soon. Love me. And one of the people that that affected me the most was Stephanie Gretzing, Gretzinger. Um she didn't speak much. She sang most of it. But she was just the way that she was talking about the love of Jesus, she said that things that I do, I don't do it anymore because it hurts my Jesus. Or I want to be there because that's where my Jesus is. And I don't know. I came back from this conference, and I don't have it all figured out yet. I don't have everything cleaned yet. And, I mean, I was pretty dead for quite a while, and I didn't realize it. But I know that if I don't feel him every day, if I don't know that he is there, if I don't, you know, if I don't press in, then I'm, I'm just going to start dying again. That anaphylactic shock is going to choke me. 
And I don't know how many times more I can go away from his presence and come back. I mean, he's merciful and he comes back, but you know, this is my stake in the ground. And they, they also said one thing, and I don't know if it was Daniel, if it was Michael, but he said that, that a lot of you in this moment are going to remember lives that this is when you gave your life to Jesus, that this is when everything changed. And I, that might have been when Daniel Kalinda called us forward. And I know this is only day two or day three from being back, but I don't feel the same and I don't want to feel the same anymore. I just need him, and I don't know how to say it. I don't know how to express it to you, but I need him. <laughs>